right, so let's actually talk about how to take pictures of fast moving objects, simple and fast. Intro. Okay, so I've already made a video about freeze motion photography, but today I thought let's actually make a second part of this video with some simple tips and tricks. So let's get started. And the first tip that I want to give you is to focus on the shutter speed. But why should you do that? Well, the basic answer is that the shutter speed is a key element when you want to take photos of fast moving objects, because if your shutter speed is too slow, your image will get blurry and the key element won't be in focus. And exactly that is why you need to analyze the situation and how fast your object might be. For example, a fish in a fish tank moves really quickly, so you need a really fast shutter speed to have the chance to take a photo that is in focus. But on the other hand, if there's just someone walking around, you can use a way slower shutter speed to achieve the freeze motion effect. And next we need to talk about the aperture. And here, of course, if you use a higher f-stop number, the more will be in focus. So basically you could say I just use f11 and above and that's it. But the problem is if you have a fast shutter speed and a high f-stop number, your image will get darker and darker. And especially if you want to take photos of some fish in a fish tank as a good example for this video, the light that you can use is limited because you can easily get bad reflections in the glass. So basically it's not always great to just push everything to the limit. Instead of that, maybe think about to use the aperture to support your fast shutter speed. So open it up and maybe go to f2.8 for example to let more and more light into the camera. The next setting we need to talk about is ISO and here I always recommend to use a minimum amount of ISO to avoid noise. And that's the same I would recommend here if you want to get the freeze motion effect. But don't be afraid to use more ISO if it is necessary because this will help you to use a fast shutter speed too. Because in the end ISO just adds more light to your image. But just to mention it here again, if you push the ISO up too much then this will lead to more noise in your image and this will lower the quality of your images really fast. So definitely keep that in your mind when you set up your ISO. The next aspect we need to talk about is how to shoot. And here it's really important to use a continuous shooting mode. Normally it's like you push the shutter button and the camera will take one photo and that's it. And that's something that can absolutely crash your photo because you need too much time to get back on track. So use a continuous shooting mode of your camera instead because this will allow you to hold down the shutter button and the camera will take more and more photos. In the end you can select in the editing the best of these pictures instead of hoping to get the shot with just one try. So all in all it's way more likely that you won't miss a shot if you use a continuous shooting mode. And to take multiple pictures is the next aspect we need to talk about. Don't be afraid to take a lot of photos because in some situations you can't really plan how the photo should look like because there's so much going on. So try to get as many shots as possible because in the editing you can always decide what kind of photos are worth it. So don't think that all kind of photos need to be a one shot. As I took these fish tank photos for a friend I had hundreds of photos because there's so much going on in a fish tank that you simply can't know all the time what is going on. But a good trick for all kind of animal photographers is just use food. Everyone loves food and especially if you're taking photos of animals food is the best way to get them in a direction where you can take the best photos. So to wrap it up here really quickly use a fast shutter speed in combination with a good aperture and a low amount of ISO. Next of course use a continuous shooting mode and don't be afraid to take a lot of photos. And exactly these are a few tips and tricks to get the freeze motion effect in your photos. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new here don't forget to smash that subscribe button to stay updated for upcoming videos and I'll see you in the next video.